with my viewers on YouTube and Facebook as well. Uh, what I'm thinking is, well, there, there, there are certain uh, catastrophic situations we don't have the time to talk about, and I'm going to rule out, but I will just briefly mention. Um, there are perhaps 20 nations in the world that have access to plutonium or highly enriched uranium. So if terrorists uh, had the uh, opportunity and the capability to make a modified uh, nuclear weapon, and explode it in a big city like New York, they would. They have the intent, but they don't have the opportunity nor the capability. So that's why, that's why I feel that um, we're going to rule out uh, a nuclear bomb going off in a big city. And um, s secondly, uh, we're we're uh, not going to um, we're not going to go into any detail about uh, biological warfare or chemical warfare. Um, there is an agency, the Department of Homeland Security, that uh, was created after 9-11. We didn't mention it in Chapter 2, and I'm briefly mentioning it now. But they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars to uh, buy from the private sector uh, equipment that could detect uh, biological or chemical uh, uh, warfare conducted against the United States in stealth by terrorists. And uh, from the Steve Brill article, uh, my understanding is it hasn't been completely successful. But uh, uh, for now, uh, let's cross those out as not the most likely uh, opportunities or likely uh, scenarios that a terrorist might be able to do. Uh, before I go on to the rest, let me just say this about terrorism. Uh, in the United States in the past 10 years, perhaps 100 Americans have died from terrorist attacks, and that's 100 too many. There should be no terrorist attacks. But let's, let's look at ourselves in the mirror. On average in the United States, uh, every year between 30 and 35,000 Americans die from gun violence. Uh, about half of them are from suicide, about half of them are from homicide. So there are 300 million guns in the United States. So uh, part of the problem is us. We have a Second Amendment, uh, which some people have a have, we have differing interpretations of the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms. And uh, I think there are too, too many guns and there should be more restrictions, but that's another conversation. But suffice to say that when you have 100 die, dying from terrorist attacks uh, in uh, Orlando, Florida, and San Bernardino, California, the Boston bombing, in, and also in Europe, in, in Belgium, and in, in France, it's, there, there are too many terrorist attacks. And I, I realize that uh, when those attacks happen, it, with, with the internet and cable TV, it has what I call a, an echoing effect. And it makes people uh, reactive and fearful, and, and that's not good. So um, anyway, now that I've gone off on a slight tangent, let's go back to uh, what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm going to rule out, even though I just saw in the paper today, uh, there have been cyber warfare attacks against uh, in Great Britain against the National Health Service and some other countries. It's called malware, in which the uh, terrorists say we're going to unlock your uh, your data, and uh, if you pay us. And uh, there have been instances where that's happened, and uh, healthcare providers and private industries have had to pay terrorists in some way. Uh, they were able to make a transaction, and they gave into terrorists. So, uh, but I don't think that that's not keeping me up at night, even though it is a clear threat. Uh, also, uh, another possibility that that could keep me up at night that I don't think is the next likely adverse situation is an improvised elect electromagnetic pulse. That that could be uh, North Korea could shoot a nuclear weapon at us exploded off the coast of the United States and it could fry the electrical grid of a large part of the United States. And there are ways in which, uh, more conventional ways, where terrorists with several thousand dollars worth of items bought at a radio shack could, at least this is what I read from the internet, they could, they could create a, a weapon that could knock out part of the electrical grid in part of the United States. So, um, but that's not keeping me up at nights, even though that is another threat. I've just named, you know, f f at least four item, four ways that could be threats. But what really bothers me is um, a dirty bomb. It's not a weapon of mass destruction. It's a weapon of mass. It's a weapon of mass disruption. And what I'm talking about is cesium-137 and cobalt-60. 
and there are at least 12 other types of radiological materials that are used by hospitals, medical centers, and private industry. There are thousands, and, and they are in secure facilities, but it's not as tight a facility as, say, um, as a, a, a military base that has nuclear weapons or a nuclear power plant. It, these are secure facilities, but they're varying levels of security. So my concern is um, that uh, because there are thousands of uh, facilities uh, uh, secure but not as secure as they could be in the United States that terrorists could attack. In fact, there are 100 countries, tens of thousands of locations worldwide that terrorists could attack. What are we doing to, uh, to uh, mitigate or eliminate this threat? Well, right now it's mitigation. Uh, uh, the pre at the presidential level, the president has been meeting and they talk about nuclear security. He's had four meetings with other heads of state. And also they talk about not only weapons of mass destruction, they talk about weapons of mass disruption, radiological dispersive devices. And uh, on the international level, at the federal level with the Department of Energy, Department of Defense, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, uh, the, and a lot of other agencies, everybody's working together. In addition, their uh, Congress is funding agencies to uh, reduce uh, the use of uh, radiological materials by hospitals and private industry and replace it with other technologies. And um, in addition, there are reform organizations that work on this, uh, including the Plowshare Fund, the Nuclear Threat Initiative, uh, the Middlebury Institute in Monterey, California, and there are a number of other organizations that are working on this. So there, since 9-11, in the last 15 years, there's been a lot of work as to uh, take materials that could make uh, a radiological dispersive device or a weapon of mass disruption or a dirty bomb to take that out of the equation. But still, we have a hundred countries and tens of thousands of locations uh, with varying levels of security that worry me. So what would happen in a scenario with a dirty bomb? Well, terrorists might shield uh, uh, cesium-137, cobalt-60, and case it in lead, and uh, there's an argument whether or whether or not uh, that shields from what NYPD is trying to do, and or uh, from what we're trying to do and prevent uh, importing this on uh, container ships. Um, so only three percent of container ships are actually X-rayed in the United States. Other way, otherwise, import export in the United States would completely shut down. So that's another hole in the system. So uh, what I'm thinking is, uh, if you're a terrorist organization, you have not only the intent because uh, it's 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 there's opportunity and capability because uh, the opportunity is there are tens of thousands of places you could steal this stuff. Uh, maybe there's a black market, um, and uh, so what I'm thinking is uh, somebody uh, taking a, a radiological material wrapping it with something uh, relatively simple like dynamite, dynamite or something a little more sophisticated like C4 explosives and you put it on top of, a, of a, uh, a tall building on Wall Street, one of the most valuable pieces of real estate in the country. It's the heart of the economic capital of the United States and perhaps the heart of the economic capital of the world. And let's say it's a windy day and the wind is swirling in different directions and there's a great velocity. So uh, how, how, how far would it spread? Well, it's hard to say. It could be blocks. It could be several blocks. It could be quite a few blocks. It could be miles. And uh, what if some uh, terrorist organization exploded uh, an RDD in Washington, D.C., uh, uh, near the White House, Capitol Hill, the U.S. Supreme Court, um, and the Federal Reserve Bank's Washington office? Um, what it could do is, for, for, for months or for years, uh, leave the political capital and the economic capital of the United States uh, contaminated. And um, I've been reading uh, different uh, ways of ridding uh, uh, a radiological dispersive device and, and radiological contamination. Uh, the, the crudest way is simply knocking down buildings, carting off the rubble, carting off the dirt, and then having to rebuild again. So um, are there 
more technologies, sandblasting, sucking up the radiological materials, uh, and and uh, creating a level that is EPA approved, or perhaps there's some level lesser level that still might be workable. So. The thing about it is, uh, in, if these radiological disposal devices, people probably would die. There might be uh, billions, tens, maybe hundreds of billions of damage. Uh, and uh, what really concerns me is the s uh, severe psychological trauma throughout the United States. It's sort of taking uh, the Rosenberg incident and making it far, far worse. So. The thing about it is, uh, I think about quotes, uh, famous quotes that uh, I think could be helpful to us. Franklin Roosevelt, uh, in the beginning of his presidency, said there's nothing to fear but fear itself. So what I think we need to do the in the United States is, um, I don't think any radiological dispersive device, despite the fact of uncertainties that I've raised, that it could be snuck in and also the fact that it's possible that terrorists could have the the, uh, the opportunity and the capability. I think uh, what we need to do is we need to work at the things we can control. In addition to uh, eliminating the use or replacing the use of radiological materials, what we need to start talking about in the United States at the presidential level, political leadership, we need to have a national conversation. Uh, it should be ongoing and a sustainable conversation. It shouldn't be the the uh, policy of the week, or the policy of the month, or the policy of a year or two or three years. This might be an ongoing long-term policy. We need to think about how can we protect the United States through civil defense. If the American people are brought into this conversation, if we understand what the government is doing, if we understand what we need to do, if we understand we're taking this step by step, and it's not a perfect solution, but we're all in this together, Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, liberals, everybody else. Uh, it doesn't matter what your religion is, it doesn't matter where you're from, we're all Americans and we're all in this together. So that's what I think we need to do and I don't have an easy plan. I have done, a, toward the end of my research, I do, have read about what the Israelis are doing. Uh, the Rand Institute, of, an important think tank, has, has, has looked at this matter. There are other organizations that are working on this matter. So uh, there's always more work to be done, and uh, but this is I, I I've done a lot of reading on uh, on uh, the trillion dollar question topic for a time, and it's only at the very end of my research, and while I've been rehearsing this talk, that it actually occurred to me as civil defense, and um, I'm thinking that uh, I borrow from uh, Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur once said, "Chance favors the well prepared mind." And I truly, dearly, and deeply believe that chance, chance favors the well-thought-out plan. And uh, so we've got a lot of work to do. This is the new normal. Uh, America is tens of thousands of soft targets. Most likely, uh, most likely the terrorists won't be able to do very much. And uh, the fact is that we are working, we are safer since, let's summarize that, we are safer since 9-11. Uh, I can't quantify how much in 15, 16 years, um, and, uh, but we are much safer. We've spent trillions of dollars, and that's why I call this title the Trillion Dollar Question. And also, uh, and that's between uh, military, uh, defense, intelligence, and police, and other agencies, and uh, agencies, Transportation Safety Administration, which is part of Homeland Security, uh, and uh, uh, agencies that uh, provide uh, research and help for medical emergencies, Centers for Disease Control, National Institutes of Health, uh, local health departments, and so on, and all the rest. So we've really pulled together, and I really think the, the, new, the new idea that I'm talking about is there, there are so many different ways where we could be threatened, including, uh, including a dirty bomb, and uh, that's certainly something we can work at and we need to work at. And, uh, and uh, I think that one of the things, one of the, the, it's really an old idea, but for me it's a new old idea, uh, is that we could pull together. We, uh, the American people have a virtual seat at the table, all 325 million of us. I think the American people are the most giving people in the world, and they're, they're, it's all about teamwork, communication, and patriotism. And I think if, if uh, at the highest levels of government we rally the people, 
and we get behind the people and we start a long-term ongoing sustained process to protect the homeland and work with our allies in the West as well, and the East as well as developing nations and uh, we're very inclusive and we work with people. Uh, I, I, I'm uh, confident, you know, even if the worst scenario that I've just outlined, I'm confident the American people are going to pull through. Not only for the next 50, uh, 25 to 50 years, the next 100, 200 years, um, I believe it's a combination of a lot of things um, and I think we can all pull together and uh, this is my idea. We need to start focusing a little bit more, a lot more, on uh, civil defense and the president needs to make that among a high priority of issues in the United States. I've about said all I needed to say today and I've summed it up. So it's been a pleasure talking to you. This is Michael Smook for YouTube commentaries. The topic of today's of conversation the topic of today's conversation is trillion dollar question. Today is May 13th. It's a Saturday. We're in the year 2017. Until next time, goodbye and good luck.